Supreme Court of Canada began hearing the extradition case of a mother and uncle accused in a so-called honor killing in India more than 17 years ago. Jassy Sadhu was brutally murdered. Her throat slashed, her body dumped in a canal in India. Her husband, Mitu Sadhu, was badly beaten and left for dead. Jaswinder Kaur Sadhu, nicknamed Jassi, was born on August 2, 1975. Jesse Kaur was born and raised in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, Canada. Her wealthy family was headed by her uncle, Surjit Singh, in the Fraser Valley after migrating from Punjab, India. On a visit to the city of Jagrayan in the Punjab state of India, in December 1994, Jassi met and fell in love with Sukhwinder Singh Sadhu, nicknamed Matho, and they kept in touch over the next four years. In 1999, Jassi made another trip to India with her family, the purpose of which was to arranging a marriage for her. Suckwinder claimed that he used to bring sleeping pills and Jassi sympathetic and would mix them with the food at dinner time and make sure everybody was fast asleep. Suckwinder would jump over the wall and enter into the house after 11 p.m. and meet Jassi in her room. Jassi and Suckwinder married secretly on March 15, 1999 in India. She did not reveal her marriage to her family, although she continued to write to Suckwinder and send him money. A year later, her family discovered the marriage through relatives in India. They strongly disapproved of this marriage because the husband was from Jossi's mother's village and belonged to the same Sadhu clan. Traditionally, such alliances among close relatives are forbidden. They attempted to persuade her to get a divorce by first offering to buy her a car and material possessions, and then by beating her. After those attempts failed, her family pressured her into signing documentation, falsely telling her that it was legal paperwork which would help Suckwinder come to Canada. Instead, the document contained criminal accusations against Suckwinder. When Jassi discovered this, she contacted Indian officials, stating that the accusations were false and she was coerced into signing them. After this, her family forcefully took her back to Canada, where she was held under confinement in the family home. Jassi escaped from family confinement with the help of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who escorted her from the residence. She obtained money from a friend to buy a plane ticket and flew to India on May 12, 2000, to reunite with Suckwinder. On June 8, Jussie and Suckwinder were kidnapped by hitmen hired by her uncle. Suckwinder was violently beaten while Jussie was taken to an abandoned farmhouse where she was subsequently murdered. On June 9, 2000, her body was found dumped in an irrigation canal and her throat had been slit. An investigation by the Indian police showed that the killers were in contact with her mother and uncle by phone, and it was determined that the order to kill Jassi was given by her mother. A mother killing her own child is actually shocking and inhuman to me. Her mother and uncle were arrested on January 6, 2012. The local hitmen involved in the killing were arrested, tried and convicted, the result of an aggressive investigation by Indian inspectors. Attempts were made to extradite her mother, Melkit Korsadu and uncle, Sergi Singh Badeshah from Canada to India, to stand trial, but the process was stalled owing to British Columbian court proceedings and Canadian extradition laws. Suckwinder was accused of false rape case in August 2004 and incarcerated in the Lithiana Central Jail for four years until he was acquitted. The woman who made the false accusation was found to have connections to Jassi Sadhu's family. After a decade-long investigation, Jossie's mother and uncle were arrested by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on January 6, 2012, 11 years after Jossie's murder. On May 9, 2014, in the Supreme Court of British Columbia, Canada, Justice Gregory Finch ordered Surjit Badeshah and Malkit Sadhu to be turned over to Indian police to face trial. This motion effectively ended the debate regarding their extradition, which had been stalled by the pair arguing that enough evidence was not present to extradite. Finch justified his decision by showing evidence that India had presented against Badeshah, including 266 telephone calls between Badeshah and the four men convicted of killing Jassi. On January 24, 2019, they were both extradited and arrived in Delhi, India to face the charges. Later both were sentenced to life in prison. 
That brings us to the end of today's video. What do you think of this case? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section.